And sort of the last approach that we get, did, uh, we compared different uh, methods uh, for this coverage analysis. There was this very, very classic way to do this, what we call a 2D gel. In this case, a 2D fluorescent Western blot, where you fluorescently stain your harvest sample, you run that in a gel, and then you incubate with an anti cho ATP reagent, and then you fluorescent, you, you, you detect that with a fluorescently labeled secondary antibody. A second method that we screened was the 2D dye, combined with the immunity, immune affinity chromatography, again using the ATP reagent uh, of choice. And then you compare that with the fluorescent labeled harvest sample. And the final approach is the one we already used for the screening of these commercial kits, the ELISA MS approach. And what we saw were very different results. So this is the more classic 2D gel approach with a Western blot. And here you ended up having a coverage number of about 28%. So in that light, our reagent didn't look very good. However, uh, the next one was the 2D Deitch immune affinity chromatography approach, where you coat a column with your reagent, you flow through your harvest sample to uh, enrich for HEPs, and you compare that back to the harvest sample. And you run this using a gel. And, and here we actually obtain a coverage of 81%. So the same, the same reagent, which made it really look really good in a way. And then we also choose to do this ELISA MS, where we had a, a very different coverage, either 70% or 55%, it depending on the way you did the data processing. The, the first way, the, the method A, you used a one MS analysis of a harvest sample and compare that to, to the immunocaptured ATPs in your, in your ELISA uh, plate. You could also uh, compare sort of a dilutional series of your harvest sample with the same immunocaptured ATPs and get a slightly different coverage. What we also find interesting here again is this also gave us information around what kind of size proteins were covered the most. And as you can see here, especially uh, proteins above 20 kilodaltons are really highly covered, whereas proteins below 20 kilodaltons is not so well covered. So, so using MS data and MS analysis gave us actually a lot of, of, of different knowledge. What, what we could see from our ELISA MS actually that, that the reagent that we used actually uh, covered quite well all of these four quadrants of the PI molecular weight plot. But what we also looked at was how did this, the, the kit standard, the HEP reference standard, how did that perform? And, and we realized that it was quite important that the kit standard in that commercial kit that we used needed to be representative of our process. So again, we did process samples and compare that to the reference standard from the kit and realize that up to 91% of the proteins were matched. So again, we could use the kit standard as a, as a representative for our process. Again, how does this contribute to our HEP control strategy? Well, one thing is that the, the, the coverage number that we obtain is relative. It depends on a lot of parameters. It depends on the methods that you choose and many of the method parameters that you have. The way the data is processed can also, of course, impact the amount of your HEPs identified. And what we found the, the advantages using an ICMS compared to the gel-based one is that it's also sort of a, a situation that is very close to a normal testing condition. So in the, in the lab, in the QC lab, where you release your batch, you would use ELISA plates and a, an ELISA approach to, to obtain 
an, a value that we used in a CL, for a C of A. So we also saw that we can use a representative sample from the process. The issues with the gel-based ones is often that if you use a representative sample from the process, you have all of these product uh, spots or product bands that might interfere with your analysis. But in this case, it does not interfere. And again, also you could, the, the, the gel actually has the ability to denature your sample, whereas in the ELISA MS approach, you actually perform the analysis in a native condition. What we also saw is that sometimes the product interference is overestimated up to 94% or 94, 49 spots were product related. And even though we had the 2D dyed immune affinity chromatography approach that was close in a certain way to the coverage number from the ELISA MS, we also know that it can actually boost the coverage number because it has the ability to enrich for lower bond in HFPs. And this is the approach we call pick a number because as you can see, many of the, of the approaches gave very different numbers. And even within the ELISA MS, the way you do your data analysis, you can have the different coverage numbers.